friends, Melissa from A Light Refurbish. If you are new here, I have been running a furniture refinishing business successfully for the past three years. Along with a farmhouse makeover, I will be sharing five helpful tips so that you can have a positive furniture refinishing experience or business. So don't go anywhere, stick around for today's makeover. My neighbor asked me to refinish this piece. And if I had to take a guess, I would say that it used to be a washstand. So here comes tip number one in having a successful furniture refinishing experience. And that is to fully assess your piece. Let's take a look inside this cutie. You can tell that the shelf is missing. The middle divider is barely hanging in there. The drawers are really snug. So even though from the outside it doesn't look like it needs a lot of work besides a good sanding, the inside is going to need a lot of love. And supplies too. That takes me to tip number two. And that is to plan ahead by having supplies at hand. Let me tell you why this is so important while I clean this piece. I purchased a cabinet a while back via Facebook Marketplace. In the picture, it looked beautiful and I thought I was getting a great deal because they were only asking $75. Unfortunately, when I got home, I realized that the entire piece was split in half, the inner shelf was missing, it was barely standing, you guys. In my eagerness to not miss out on this, what I thought was a great deal, I paid before picking up. In my head, if I was ever to sell a piece of furniture, even if it wasn't refinished, that had something major that needed to be fixed, I would fully disclose that. But not everybody operates that way. So another tip, don't pay ahead, don't assume, and always inspect the piece before paying and deciding if it's a project that you wanna take on. That takes me to tip number three three to only accept projects that are within your skill level i need to be comfortable knowing what my limits are when it comes to refinishing and for that i need to ask myself is this job gonna require a skill that i already have or is it requiring me to deep into something new if you're going to develop a new skill i suggest that you save that for your own home project but not for your client's pieces, as this will add unnecessary anxiety on your end. So many times saying no to a client is the best thing you can do. Before sharing the next tip, I wanna remind you that I have links to all the products that you see me using today, and they are under the video description. In preparing this piece, I use my orbital sander, but I also use my surf prep sanding system here. It is the MVP of the week because you're gonna see here in a few minutes how we also help me distress this adorable piece to give it a farmhouse look. I mean, it already looks like it belongs in a farmhouse, but um, you're gonna see we're gonna go for a very fun color here. After all this sanding and scraping, it's finally time to wash this piece and start working on the much needed repair work here. Obviously this piece is very old and it has cracks here and there. Nothing that's really, really big except for a couple large gouges of wood veneer missing on the top. So for some of these repairs, I'm using regular wood filler. For the large gouges, I'm using quick wood. Quick wood is a two-part product that you knit together until it becomes one single color. After 30 minutes, it is dry and it's ready to sand. For even smaller repairs, I'm using this glazing and spot putty. This is like bando that has been already mixed for you. It can be sanded after 30 minutes as well. 
Now for the shelf that we need to add, I'm using this Spice Walnut Stain from General Finishes. I will also be staining everything behind the door so that the wood there matches. A half hour later, after all the wood filling, bando, quick wood repairs have dried, I sanded everything until smooth with 120 grit. After wiping off all the dust, I'm moving to priming. I'll be using clear shellac so that the brown comes through and also to black any of those wood tannings that might want to filter through the new paint job. This is also known as bleed through. While I prime, I'd like to talk to you about tip number four and that is to keep an open and clear communication with your customer through the completion of the project. I prefer to communicate via email or text. That way there is something in record for my customers and myself to go back and use as reference. We're gonna take this piece that I'm working on as an example. This is the fifth piece that I have worked for my neighbor and client. Of course, we have built a level of trust because there's been open and clear communication over time. When the piece was dropped off, I was asked to make it as functional as possible. And as you're gonna see here in the next few minutes, after I'm done here scuff sanding it in preparation for painting, I will be making lots of little repairs to it. A huge part of keeping good communication is offering details. Explain the damage that you discover and the materials that you're going to be using to make the repair and the extra time is going to take you. That way you and your customer are on the same page. Going back to this little piece, the reason why I'm scuff sanding after priming is so that my paint has good adhesion. After I'm done wiping off all the dust, this piece will be ready for painting. My customer chose this beautiful green from Country Cheek. First impressions is thicker than the paints that I normally use. This is a chalk style paint. Chalk style paints show a color variation, which I think it's perfect for this type of piece that I'm working on. You know, you have your imperfections. It's going to be distressed and aged looking. Totally different if I were to go for a sleek and smooth finish. In that case, I would probably use a different style paint. One thing stays the same is the brush that I use, my Precision Cut-In Edge Zebra Brush. These brushes are really inexpensive and I know people at all skill levels that use them, from beginners to pros. Quick reminder that it's always a good idea to let your repairs dry overnight, especially if you're glued anything and also let your paint dry. Now here the next day, I also use my surf prep to distress this piece. I don't think I've ever had a piece where I distress as much as this one. I'm not on the heavy distress team, but you know, my customer had a sample for me and I'm just going by what she wants because at the end of the day, it's her piece. 
and if you don't like farmhouse style which i know that people have grown out of it that's okay many people still love it i personally love all styles and i'm not just saying that i have mid-century modern pieces in my house i have antiques i have industrial style pieces i love it all The distressing part is done now and I can start adding that shelf and take care of details before I start top coating my piece. So here we're drilling some packet holes so that we can drill that base. A three-quarter round was added to fill in a gap that was between the base and the side. When we tried to screw the door back on, we saw that the door was way too snug, so we shaved one of the edges using our miter saw. For the last repair, I'm using this flat mill file tool. It's going to help me shave the side of the drawer so that they slide smoothly. This is a bonus tip. If you want to take your project to another level, it's all about the details. After I scrubbed the original hardware, some of them were brass looking and the other ones were silver looking like these ones. I wanted all of it to match. So these pools were painted with that black enamel and lightly dabbed with the rough and buff color to give them that H look. Let's top coat this cutie using this clear furniture wax from Shacto Interiors. I make sure that I apply it in a circular motion and work it in. 15 minutes later, you can go back and wipe it off with a lint-free rag and buff it if you want some shininess. But I think that wax is already shiny enough, at least for me. This brings me to my last tip of the day, and that is to be courageous and charge accordingly. Sometimes it's hard to see the value in the work that we do, but the way I see it is if you don't see your own value, nobody else will. So be transparent with your customers and charge what's right. Are you guys ready to see the final results? I sure am. And I couldn't help myself and use the tulips that bloomed this week. They were gorgeous. Besides the tulips, I think this piece turned out super farmhouse gorgeous. If you enjoyed today's content, don't forget to give me a thumbs up and leave a comment. This really helps out the channel. Finally, let me know in the comments if you still love farmhouse style or if you've grown out of it. I would love to know. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I hope that you found today's video helpful. Don't forget that just like there's hope for these pieces of furniture, it doesn't matter how tough things get. There's always hope for you. I will see you guys next week.